Today, I visit with international recording artist, singer, songwriter, producer, what have you, Patrick Sasson from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm your host, Rick J, and this is Spotlight on the Arts. J presents Spotlight on the Arts. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. And uh, basically supported by many uh, enthusiasts in the art world, whether it be performing or with a brush or woodcarver or a glass blower. So uh, I want to welcome everyone worldwide now, thanks to the new streaming networks that uh, we've um, been able to join. I would now ask you to please join me in welcoming songwriter, singer, uh, musician, and more from Phoenix, Arizona, Patrick Sasson. Welcome, Patrick. Uh, thank you, Rick. Glad to be here. Thank you. Looking good, looking good. Well, <laughs> please, if you would, start things off. We'd like you. If you would, please share a little bit about Patrick Sasson if you will, uh, back to your birth, what have you. And uh, it's just people like to identify anything they can identify with you. I guess they, they like that. So I'll go ahead and fill us in a little bit on Patrick. Sure. I've uh, got many years to fill in, but I'll try not to make it too long. Oh, I see. Um, I was born uh, in... Uh, in a suburb of Chicago, on the south side of Chicago, it was called Blue Island, Illinois. Oh, I see. And um, spent some of my youth there, but uh, main years, uh, I would say, between eight and uh, eighteen, were uh, in Lansing, Illinois, where I went to school and and uh, made a lot of old friends. And um, I started actually playing the accordion at age five. I see. Um, it, it, Believe it or not, back then, in our neighborhood anyways, we had door-to-door -door salesmen that would sell music lessons. Oh, would come, Yeah, and they would come to your house. And the only one that ever came was an accordion, uh, you know, accordion teacher. And I wanted to learn music. So I said, right. sure, let's do that. So uh, now, how, <laughs> how about the family? I understand you have a, a family. Would you like to oh. uh, bring those up? Dear. Uh, absolutely. It's my wife, my daughter, and uh, three grandkids. Uh, we're all here together in Phoenix. And and what do they call you? What's your name by the grandchildren? Oh, Papa. 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 Okay. Yeah. Sounds... Now, don't let me forget. We do have a we do have a dog named Holly. And the dog Holly. Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah, you can't yeah. leave Holly out. I know. Oh, why. absolutely not. She'd hate that. Yes. <laughs> They, they do get their, a little bit of attitude, you know, if you don't, uh, I've got the, a grand champion, uh, Doberman, you know. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Sir Von Riker. But if I leave off that grand champion, he gets a little upset. <laughs> yeah. It appears anyway. Well, let's go back now. Again, uh, step into how you became inspired to become an entertainer. How do you like to be recognized as a songwriter, producer, singer, band leader, musician? Also in that question. So you basically was inspired at five years old uh, as an accordion player, I guess. Huh? Right, yeah, I, I, for whatever reason, I wanted to learn music. So I, I actually started music lessons before I even started uh, school. Oh, I see. And uh, I took those lessons and worked with that till I was about 13 and decided I wanted to move on to something else. Uh, so eighth grade graduation, I got an acoustic guitar. Uh -huh. And that from that point on, that was it. I just wanted to be a guitarist. I wanted to sing. I wanted to write. And because I already had some background in music, um, I taught myself to play the guitar. Oh, and I uh, had my first band about a year after that and, and started writing. 
I and see. writing, I, the music's always been my passion. And I love singing, I love playing, but above those, I love to create, I love the writing aspect of it all. Oh, excellent. And we're going to learn more about that in the second segment, just how we pick that apart a little bit in a technical sense, I guess. Now, okay. it was there a, a one person that encouraged you to take up that, uh, that uh, first musical instrument, the accordion? Uh, yeah, my mother influenced uh, most of it. I mean, my father in, enjoyed it too and wanted it. They both influenced me at that point. Um, but my mother in later years when I switched, um, you know, kept that influence going. Excellent. Well, you know, my mother would, uh, Kansas City, uh, we f left the farm at uh, when I was six years old, went to Kansas City, and, and by seven, mom would hop us on the bus and head downtown, and both my older sister, Barbara, and I started the accordion lessons. And I didn't like the accordion so much, so I went to piano. Oh, great. And she still plays the accordion, too, to this day. So I can identify, see, yeah. uh, as, as a host, I can identify with you, and maybe many more that was encouraged to pick up that uh, accordion or whatever as right. that, uh, gentleman passed by in the neighborhood and uh, encouraged you. So basically, uh, from at age five, what, who was the, the main focus of uh, inspiration, uh, would you say? Was that shared by mom and dad, grandparents? Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. It was my mother and father, um, and I can't, I couldn't quite put a finger on exactly what it was, but there was uh -huh. just, there was something about it and creating music that just kind of interested me immediately uh -huh. and took over. So uh, I see now along those lines, uh, national talent. I, I know you've been inspired meeting different ones so from my research. I want to ask who really may be inspired. I know Billy Walker comes to mind, uh, Phil and uh, his brother, Chess, Phil Chess and his brother. And then finally, Curtis Mayfield, I understand. So so uh, internationally or nationally, it was the one or two people that you'd like to mention that you want to thank in our interview for taking that extra moment. Well, I mean, if I could, I certainly would thank Billy Walker because the first hey, band well. I had with, with family members, cousins, was at about 15. And he, he gave us a chance to open for his act when he had played the uh, Aragon Ballroom in Chicago. Oh, my. I won't say how long ago that was because it was <laughs> quite, a, quite a long time ago. But he ago. gave us that yeah. opportunity. And that just that kind of set me on fire at that point. And then a, a few years later, actually, I think just a couple years later, we had a, um, a manager for the band um, that was that knew uh, uh, the Chess Brothers personally. And he took us downtown to Chess Records to talk to them with the music. And um, yes. uh -huh. and he just, just gave us a lot of insight and direction at that point. And uh -huh. then meeting Curtis Mayfield was, was fantastic. I mean, he was at the height of his career. Um, and I, pro I was about 19, about 19 years old at the time. And um, we, our, our band manager happened to be the twin brother of his personal manager. Oh, I see. So he arranged us for the go to meet him at his uh, recording studio uh, and uh, introduced us to him. And we had quite a lengthy conversation on just the music industry and a, a very wonderful, soft spoken, uh, kind man he was. So and, that was and I that it was awesome. And I've always remembered all those all those meetings that we were able to have. Yes, great. Yeah, the, a great insight there for you and uh, inspiration. Uh, you have the passion to begin with, and if someone kind of comes in and interjects <laughs> and builds it even further, so it kicks us back in gear. Um, well, let's, how would you identify, uh, you know, you've been introduced to different types of music, but 
I associate your voice. It sounds so much like out of the 70s. Uh, I wouldn't say so much Herman Hermits, but uh, some of those groups of the 70s. Uh, and you're, the, the group uh, we want to talk about initially, I guess, uh, Society's Children that you put together uh, with a hit song I remember back uh, I think I've even played that. Um, if I, re- I well, I know I have. It's Mr. Genie Man. I know made a big hit. So, how do you kind of how do you uh, identify with the types of music you've been introduced to? And now, what do you like to really identify your your work that we're introducing now to the world today? Well. You know, back then it was the, the the major music influences obviously started when I was very young and my parents would watch the teen TV shows like Dean Martin show and all those things. So yes. a lot of those um, older artists like that and Andy Williams and things. And I always enjoyed all types of music. And then obviously when the folk craze started to hit, yes. um, when Paul, I was an early yeah. teenager, that just that really grabbed me because not only was it was the music great, but they were saying important things. Right. And, that and be locked along the lines of Peter, Paul, and Mary. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Peter, Paul, and Mary, Kingston Trio, Kingston um, Trio. Joni Mitchell, any of any of those at the time. Yes. And uh, I was taking all that in at the same time when the British invasion hit. Yes. With the Beatles and the Stones and the Dave Clark Five and the Kings and all those early groups. So I grabbed all that too, <laughs> yes, and started are. incorporating some of that. But I, definitely, you all, um, society's children, fell right into that folklore type sound. I thought, and even identify with that. Uh, your voice, how it comes across now, uh, in my opinion. So, uh, well, let's turn to a sample of your music. And this, do you have any more on that? Before we well, other than other than all through the years, I've, I've the main thing I liked listening to was the song. It wasn't necessarily a particularly favorite group or singer. If I liked the song they sang, then that's what that's what drew me in was the actual songs themselves. So I absorbed all kind of styles all these years. I mean, I still do today. Some of the things I'm working on today that I'm writing aren't like anything I've ever written before. Totally uh, different style. So, yes. you know, I I I have such a huge mixture of things. I couldn't even classify it if I had to. Well, now what they're calling that, uh, Patrick, is developing now your own brand. Uh, I've developed a brand as a host, whatever um, promotions. Right. So you have developed your own brand and style of music, which we're going to share. And uh, it's really, it's really great as far as, especially as a single entertainer, you know, not being backed up, you're coming across really well with your instrumentation and and writing and the the message, you know, in your music. I tried to show that in the promo reel that we introduced recently to um, let people know what's coming uh, with Patrick Sassone in our interview. So let's go ahead, if you would, tell us a little bit about this uh, selection uh, called Walk Away. And now that's got the bluesy, in my opinion, kind of a blues feel to it. So tell us a little bit about that. and. We'll go to that selection and take a listen. Okay, yeah, Walk Away, I wrote for my um, Rage album. It was titled Rage. Yes. Uh-huh. And um, I, like to, I, I like to tell stories a lot of times in my songs, just from everyday life. And it was about um, a person. It was about a woman or a girl, hypothetical, that had just been used and abused in a relationship. I see. And... Basically, you know, you, you, you've got life ahead. You can have a good life ahead. But sometimes you just have to walk away from where you're at and start yes. again and, so and, and be walk. courageous enough to do that. So that's basically what the song's about. All right. Let's turn to Walk Away by Patrick Sassone. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right. Here we go. 
Sometimes in life you can't change things No matter what you do You try but it just doesn't matter Things keep messing with you Why not just pack your go bags And get on down the road Shake that dust off of your boots And free yourself from the load From that load, yeah Well, leave it all behind you Start all over again Your heart will heal Your mind will clear and all of your wounds will mend Well, try not to worry Everything will be alright Don't look back, no, don't look back Your past is out of sight The rest of your life's gonna start today It's time to stand up, yeah, and just walk away Troubles You've never been treated right Someone always came out ahead And you always lost the fight It's finally time to just walk away Time to try and find some peace Find a way to take back your soul And finally put your mind at ease yeah. The rest of your life's gonna start today It's time to stand up, yeah, and just walk away Walk away, no reason to stay, just walk away. Oh, just walk away, no reason to stay, but just walk away. Get to walk. Walk away Welcome back. That was a great selection, Patrick. Uh, I really do get the message. And uh, I'm, I'm sure people across uh, the, uh, the overseas, whatever you will pick up on that also. In the second segment, we're going to listen to another selection of uh, Patrick Sassone. Well, Patrick, we must take a break. Time flies so fast. So hang loose for a second, if you would. Well, you've got it. It's okay. In the second segment, uh, uh, we'll discuss Patrick's view on music, the music scene as it looks uh, uh, today, and what it takes to get uh, to his current level, uh, should we say, of stardom. <laughs> or survival, I guess you could even say it, and then some of his future plans. So stay with us. There's more on Spotlight on the Arts. 56 Years of Entertaining by Patrick Sassone. Creative Connection control, support the arts, and be the change. 24 hours a day, 200 countries. The show must go on. 
Introducing the world's first exclusive platform for artists and creators of all kinds. The biggest stage on earth. Stream Spotlight on the Arts on fanforme.com. Stream Spotlight on the Arts on GIAJ Global Media OTT Network. Google us or find us on Roku, Amazon Fire.tv, or Apple.tv. Hi, I'm Rick J. And I'm Jeffrey Pearl. And we're here to introduce you to GIAJ Global Media OTT Network. Hope you'll tune in. Tune in and watch all the great shows by independent producers, music, and film and podcast. On okay. Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and or Google it on GIJ Global Media Network. It's a free download now. Thank you. Welcome back to Spotlight on the Arts. Uh, join me now as we continue our discussion with entertainer Patrick Sasson of Phoenix, Arizona. Well, Patrick, uh, you shared a lot in the first segment and have surely gained the attention of our viewers here under the spotlight. Uh, your productions are outstanding. We must learn more. Uh, a lot of these productions are coming out of what you identify as Coyote Productions. Is that correct? That's correct. I wish yeah. you had the coyotes here in my neighborhood out here in the country, <laughs> the, the howling at night. But Oh, yeah, we get a lot of that. We get a lot of that here where I live. I bet. So coyote productions. Okay, well, please share with the viewers now where you've been and where you're headed in the future world of entertainment. Uh, for example, uh, you've produced like 12 albums uh, since 2010. Uh, you might even talk to us about your first gig, if you would, and take us on the path from there. You might say from the first gig. How was that first gig? What did that feel like? Oh, the, that the first, first stage, I guess. Yeah, that first gig was exciting, and I and I believe it was the opening for uh, Billy Walker. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, and uh, to just take a stage like that for a first time for young kids it was just amazing. And, yeah. and that's something you don't forget. And it's something that kind of spurs you on to do it again. So yes. now, do you remember the song that you sang? And was you by yourself? Or did, Billy, did Billy Walker back you up with the uh, instrumentation? No, basically, we just opened. It was, it was myself and um, Your myself, two of my cousins, uh -huh. um, and, uh, and uh, a school friend of mine. I uh, see. We just had that little, you know. And did you have a name at that time? I think we were the call. I think we were called the Shamrocks. The Shamrocks, yes. I think. I think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, as memory uh, serves you up. Uh, see. Well, great. So that was a great feeling. And Billy Walker, my goodness, uh, oh, such great music. Well, in one breath or two, could you uh, please tell the viewers what it takes to follow a path as an entertainer? These are for the, you know, I've got uh, a lot of the young entertainers trying to come aboard used to, you know, we have to get out those 45 singles. Now we've got social network. And if you, if you ha can't spend the, the time with social networking, uh, you might as well take advantage of this, the whole sure. new ball game. So uh, kind of tell us what, how you've, on your path, what it's been like and where are you today? as far as getting your um, your brand, as they say, and, and, and sharing your talent? Well, I think what's carried me through all these years and, and, and what I would give as advice to any anybody wanting to get in the music business, um, you have to be realistic, first of all. You have to have a passion for the music, for what you're doing. Um, that that passion has to be able to drive you most of your life if that's what it takes. Uh -huh. And you have to love what you're doing, whether you think you found success or not. I mean, so many times uh -huh. um, I thought things are just not going anywhere. But 
because I loved what I was doing. I loved creating songs. That fire kept burning and it, yes. and it keeps burning and burns today. Mm-hmm. So that, that love for just doing what I do has carried me through, you know, hundreds of ups and downs. Right. Well, you know, people set goals. I don't identify with the word goal so much. I sort of identify with a, uh, an adventure trying to reach an adventure. Uh, goals all have a, an end. You right. either fail <laughs> or you success. But if you look at a continuous, like you've done, uh, pattern are just going forth. There's no end to that. So absolutely, uh, absolutely. The goals just go for it, keep working it like you have, and finally yeah. to reach a, a good age uh, where you really have come to fruition. You might say, as far as feeling, it sounds like feeling comfortable with yourself and your your talent and uh, what is has been transpired. Shall we say? Well, can you? Um, can you, I guess, give us a quick review of some of your uh, past bookings or, or past recognitions? Uh, I guess we kind of covered that uh, based with um, uh, some of that we've mentioned already. So uh, did you have any others that? Well, you know, I uh, my musical life went the usual path, um, playing private things, playing uh weddings and birthdays and okay. anywhere you could play uh, and then moving into clubs and uh, a lot of clubs yeah. and festivals and fairs and you know playing just about anywhere you can and then um uh, then about 12 years ago um i started recording myself i started recording trying to record everything that I've ever written. And that that took me to a whole new level where I actually was able to get my music out, out to a lot of the all, you know independent uh, stations in the US and all over the world. Um, so I, I think my biggest achievement today um, is that I have been able to get my music out to people that want to listen to it. Yeah, I mean, that was always my goal was to be able to play, sing, and write my music my whole life, and and I've been able to do that. I, you know, there's, I've never looked for the monetary success. Um, everybody likes some kind of recognition, but the main goal for me was to always be able to do it for as long as I could. I guess we should talk about this newest Rage album, which we've. Uh, somewhat promoted already through the promo reel that I put up. So tell us about the race. Is that the basic message that you're trying to get all your selections on there? Get the message about uh, rage brings together some, some, should we say fire (laughs) within a person trying to overcome or disappointments, what have you. Uh, your rage album what how would you did you have a certain theme is what i'm after yeah basically there was and oh wait first before we go that far by the way if there's anybody out there who's got any ideas for gigs just you know give me an email yes. and we'll discuss it okay okay now and, do you want to give that email while you're oh alone it's now? easy patrick sassone at hotmail.com i didn't even have to ask for it so <laughs> Well, so basically rage, that's what you're turning everyone in. Rage, yeah, the rage, rage in the aspect of we people, not, uh, people in general need to get fired up and get wrongs righted, get, right, get the right things done for the right people. Things that need to be done should be taken care of. Uh-huh. You should feel some kind of empathy, some kind of burning in here that says, you know, that's just not right. I've got to help try and do something about that. Yes. It's that type of rage. It's not a crazy rage. It's a, right. not right. an That's angry rage. rage. Like, uh, we need to do something with Ukraine. And, um, uh, absolutely. So that rage absolutely. is in me. Uh, daily. That burns a terrible fire in me every day. I have, yes. I have to tell you that. Yeah, it does. But um, oh. that, that was kind of the theme. Okay. And then, of course, there's other things mixed in, but... Yes. Well, let's turn to that selection that um, three o'clock on the, in the morning that I'm really 
uh, uh, really like uh, on that new album, Three O'Clock in the Morning. Uh, tell us about that, and <laughs> we'll turn to, uh, spin that on the old uh, turntable here. <laughs> okay, well, that's some of, the, some of the newer music I'm writing that's a little more, maybe a little more rock, triple A oriented. Um, and three o'clock in the morning is just, it, it, it's been my story. It's a story about me having, you know, getting older and having those nights where you just can't sleep and, you, and all of your past memories start going through oh. your head and you wonder, well, whatever happened to them? Whatever happened to this friend? Whatever happened to this relative? You know, what happened to where I live? It's all those thoughts and memories you have that flow through your head when you can't sleep. Yeah, well, that's exactly. To, if we may, let's turn to three o'clock in the morning by right. Patrick Sisson. Three o'clock in the morning and I haven't slept a wink. My mind keeps racing and all I can do is think. Memories spinning round and round, some I lost, so many found at three o'clock in the morning. All of my thoughts are twisted of everything I've ever done. Then I envision all these things and everyone. Memories spinning round and round, some I lost, so many found at three o'clock in the morning. Clock in the morning, my whole life is calling. Reminds me of everywhere I've been. I see so many faces in all those long lost places, reminding me I'll never go back again. All the times that I shared. Some happy and some sad And all the choices I've made Some were good and some were bad Memories spinning round and round Some are lost, so many found At three o'clock in the morning Three o'clock in the morning, my whole life is calling, reminds me of everywhere I've been. I see so many faces in all those long lost places, reminding me I'll never go back again. Three o'clock in the morning. Wish that I could sleep But all my memories haunt me Some I'd lose and some I'd keep Memories spinning round and round Some are lost, so many found At three o'clock in the morning Clock in the morning, my whole life is calling. Reminds me of everywhere I've been. I see so many faces in all those long lost places, reminding me I'll never go back again. Three o'clock in the morning, my whole life is calling. Reminds me of Everywhere I've been I see so many faces In all those long lost places Reminding me I'll never go back again Three o'clock in the morning Three o'clock in the morning 
Well, that was a, another great selection by Patrick Sasson out of Phoenix, Missouri, continuing his desire and, uh, should we say, passion for music, writing, songwriting, what have you. So, uh, Patrick, I'm running close on time. So, do you have a contact? Uh, we mentioned before a contact for bookings or information. Uh, you would like? Would you like to go completely with the uh, email, or would you? Do you want to go with Facebook also? Or whatever? oh yeah, you, you, my email is fine. Um, you also can go on my. Uh, my website, uh, patricksasone.com, or you can go, uh, I, I'm also on Instagram. Um, I think it's under Patrick Sassone Music on Instagram. Any of those places are great. Uh, that's yeah. where we first met, I believe, on, and LinkedIn possibly. So um, I just, yeah, do I yeah. have to uh, get you uh, under the spotlight? <laughs> so well, that sounds great. Okay, any future venues or productions? Uh, that you have planned? Are you, are you booked for that Sedona Fair? And I'm 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 working on another uh, new album, and I hope to work on a uh, kind of a family folk album uh, this summer. So, like I said, I, my main focus has mainly been on the recording. One one other thing I like to mention before, and just in case we don't get to it, is there's a particular song that that. I'm, I like to get a lot of people to hear, and I wrote it some time ago, but um, it's called Break the Chains, and it's about child abuse, I about see. break the chains that are causing this child abuse. So if anybody out there checks out any of my music, which you can find all over, you can you can find it on, uh, well, any of the sites, but you can find it, you can hear all, everything that I've done on Airplay Direct. AirplayDirect.com, Airplay Patrick Sasson Music, and you can hear everything I've done. But it's a great song. It's for a good cause, and I just like as many people to hear as possible. Super. Well, we're just about out of time, so I want to thank you so much for contributing uh, to Spotlight you know, Light on the art, Arts and uh, making it a learning and informational experience for all. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, Rick. And uh, if anybody would like to contact me for a, a question, anything to say hello, any of those, any of those, the email, uh, Instagram, or, or even my website, it, it's great. Sounds good. All right. Thank you once again. And I want to thank the viewers worldwide uh, for watching Spotlight on the Arts, for taking time out and uh, to watch the shows and follow these uh, a great artist that I'm bearing you forth from the past and even to modern day, if you, uh, as you follow. So Rick J saying, be safe and stay healthy. See you next time. Take care. Take care. Stay with us. There's more to come on. Spotlight on the Arts.